So let me put this uh, uh, in perspective first. So I joined CCC three and a half years ago, and we showed at our user conference, which was my first day at the company, a prototype of using AI in the claims process. And I talked to a lot of customers about it at the meeting, because I have a background in AI. I used to be a VP of big data analytics at IBM, and uh, not one of them was even remotely interested. Okay, you know, they insurance companies. Uh, you know, they thought it was cool for the future, but they had other things they needed to do in the present, and it wasn't even on their radar. And I could tell you that, uh, boy, what a difference three years makes. It, it's rather shocking. Uh, there is not one single conversation that CCC is, is not involved with, is involved with, with any insurance company, that this is that the number one topic driving a vastly more efficient process with AI. They are calling us now, they are calling me, and they want to know when we're going to have it ready and deployed. Uh, and what is the reason for this uh, astonishing change? And I think it comes down to these three things. Number one, the continuing pain. The cars are vastly more expensive. They are uh, vastly more expensive to repair all of the sensors, et cetera. We've all been through this these last few days and understand this issue. That problem is not going away. Insurance companies solve the problem by raising their rates. There is a cap to which the rate increases will have to stop. The average you know, person in the United States has gotten something like a 15% total raise over the last 30 years. So if the rates keep going up, it's just a drive down to the bottom. They'll get less coverage, different insurance companies, et cetera. It's not going to be a win, and you already see it stopping. Uh, new consumers who expect a different experience that they're in charge of through their mobile phones, they do it with everything else, why would they not do it with insurance? And readiness. Insurance companies now have AI labs and other advanced technology in their lab. They are looking at those technologies in a very aggressive way to figure out how to change these processes. And you know, what are the, the, the possibilities for change? And it basically comes down to a mixture of these three capabilities uh, in the claims process, mobile, IoT, and AI. And you don't need me to tell you this because you see it every day. I mean, it, it, who's went into a Best Buy in the last month or so? What is the first thing you see? You see these three things, right? It's, you know, the Hue lighting, you know, the, the Alexa, all the kind of IoT stuff all over the place, the cameras on your front door, the way to open your door, the, the cameras on your refrigerator, et cetera, all IoT, all the, uh, the mobile phones is the next step, you know, all the various things, the contraptions, the iPhones, et cetera, and what drives all that stuff? all the AI. So what we're talking about here is just taking all those things and moving it to this domain. So let's talk and focus more about AI in this presentation. And I just thought I'd, I'd go a little bit backwards just to make sure we're all on the same page. So the big step in AI that made all this possible, a AI has been around for, since 1950, for those who don't know, and it was a joke. I mean, it was in the sub-basement of every college university, and it was completely useless up until about 2012. And uh, what happened in 2012 is the big data revolution. Okay, all of a sudden you had data starting to be created from vast numbers of sources and you could use all that stuff that those geeks in the basement had been working on for the past 60 years. Okay, and basically, so this was an example. This was Google and the cat experiment. They used more advanced neural nets. They showed this algorithm, you know, pictures of cats and, and guided it. That's a cat, that's a cat, that's a cat, that's a cat, that's a cat. That's, you know, a microphone, not a cat. Okay, this is Jason, not a cat. Okay, that's TV, not a cat. And the thing learned when it showed it new pictures, which were cats, which were not cats. Now, the funny part of this is, you know, AI is usually described as something that uh, thinks and learns like a human. So let me see a show of hands. How many people learned what a cat was by looking at millions of pictures? Okay, totally ridiculous definition, right? Okay, but, but what, what is true is that if you have enough data to show these advanced algorithms something, it learns with devastating accuracy. And people have begun to take advantage of that in many, many ways. So let's just rip through. So transportation, the self-driving cars, for example, which is a remarkable achievement, uh, albeit one that will take a long time to come to fruition. Manufacturing, there are now machines that control other machines through robotics by the use of AI. Security, fingerprinting, facial analysis, et cetera, all AI driven. AI driving financial optimization, portfolio building, et cetera. Medicine, okay, Watson Analytics. I actually toyed with that when I was back in IBM. So you show Watson Analytics MRIs, and it can recognize cancer at a rate that is the same or better than a human with similar rates of false positives. So a couple of, couple of things about this. Let me ask, uh, and how does it do it? Cat, not a cat, cancer, not cancer. Okay, same concept. Uh, how many of you would be willing to have an invasive operation based on just what the computer says about the cancer, not any human backup? Zippo, 
And you're exactly right, I wouldn't either. Okay, keep that thought in mind because it has a very important subcontext for what we're doing in this industry. And beer, of course. Uh, beer sensors for those who don't, beer uh, kegs for those who don't know, are now heavily censored. Okay, they have sensors in them, and they, they recognize things like temperature fluctuations, humidity, etc. the time between when it was closed versus when it was tapped, and they can predict when beer is not going to be good, and they dump the keg and send another one. Okay, so everything, you walk down the strip in Vegas, everything is AI-driven, whether you realize it or not, okay? And why is it? Uh, trillions of dollars in cost savings, efficiency, self-directed consumer experience that are vastly more uh, efficient, interesting, fun, et cetera. Here it is, okay? And insurance companies are now all in, okay? They are, <laughs> they are going nuts with AI in the claims process. Uh, and where does it, you know, they're looking at it as a way to change a 100-year-old process. And where does it start? With the taking of a single picture of an accident. And anybody who thinks that you know, people won't take the pictures, they will. They take the pictures of their puppies, they take the pictures of their desserts, they take the pictures of the checks that they get, they're automatically deposited in banks, they take pictures of everything, okay? This one, by the way, got us thinking. If you can take a picture of a check, why can't you take a picture of an accident and get the money in your account? Should, should be just that easy. So it got us thinking about that. Sure enough, let's go through some of the advances in AI that insurance companies are already deploying. There's not one single thing I'm gonna talk about in the next three minutes and 22 seconds that's some sort of future. Everything exists right now, okay? Uh, number one, one picture, you can tell whether the car is repairable or a total loss with 90 plus percent accuracy. Cat, not a cat. Fresh beer, not fresh beer. Cancer, not cancer. Total loss, not a total loss. Same concept. Uh, damage detection. Take a series of photos. AI can show you where the damage is on the vehicle with these heat maps. Why is this important? Let's go back to Watson Analytics. What's the problem with Watson Analytics? Why didn't any of you were willing to go under the knife? It says I have cancer. I don't see any cancer. I don't trust it. It says this is the damage on the car. Let me go look at the car. Oh, yeah, it's right. This is what drives trust in these new technologies, okay? And it's already released and available. Virtual inspection, so all of these photographs with the heat maps go to a virtual inspection platform now at an insurance company. They use it to build an estimate, okay? Just about now, we are releasing that the first round estimate will be pre-built based on that information. There's a fusion of AI and estimating logic. An estimate gets created automatically for the insurance company. And then, with that little blue pen to the right of this picture, they can go in and edit the estimate and interact with it. This is the best way to deploy AI. AI takes care of a whole bunch of stuff, and you use the brilliance of the AI and the brilliance of experience of the human to get the most value out of the humans involved for the tougher cases. That's how these estimates are now gonna be built. So where does this go for repair? And I think, you know, I have, I, I have been involved with, with AI for 20 years. I was involved with some of those examples I showed you earlier. Once you hit a, 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 a tipping point, uh, it, it becomes kind of self-catalytic. It starts speeding up like wildfire. The industry is transformed. And three or five years later, you look back, and nobody can even believe it was done in a different way. And, and that's about where we are with this technology, and once it hits that, which is basically next year, I mean, I can't even describe to you how many insurance companies are already using pieces of this and testing the rest, it's gonna start bleeding into other parts of the ecosystem. So that's where it's gonna go to repair, because you can get in repair the same value out of these technologies. Some of it was, was discussed even earlier. I mean, a car's in a crash, we can automatically detect in real time the car was in a crash. So you've got all the pixels on all of these images. You've got all the results of those, those sensors that are in DTC codes, et cetera. You have 5G networks coming along. That is a mother load of big data that is available instantly to eventually pre-order parts, pre-build repair plans, pre-build estimates. Sit in a room that's dark with a martini, with a lava lamp, and start thinking of how this can emerge. And you are going to be staggered. And here's the thing. It's gonna happen. Here we go. I've seen this movie too many times. We're about at that point. And I have nine seconds left, so I just wanna thank you. Thank you.